Hello, boys. Hello, Chris. Hello, Chris. You're doing a good job, boys. I like Thank what you. I see. Oh, I've got a special challenge for you this week. Shoot, Chris. Science. I want you to prove that science is spelt F-U-N. But it's not. No, it's not. It's spelled S-I-U-N-S. I know. But do this well, and I'll make sure you're both suitably rewarded. <laughs> Welcome to Science 2000. As we hurtle towards the millennium, 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 the end of the century, many people are asking the same question. Does science have a place in the world today? No. After all, we've invented everything there is to invent, and everyone has seen at least one episode of How Do They Do That? Mm. But after having said this, I'm now going to say this. Science. Why is it spelled like this? And not like this? Well, it doesn't matter anyway because we've decided to spell science like this. That's right, science is fun and we'll be showing you why in a moment. But now, Mitch, tell us what objectively verifiable sensory experiences we can expect today. Okay, science chums, now in a few moments' time we'll be collecting fascinating information from the street. Piglin, Jeff and Jody carry out more precise experiments in the kitchen. Those living experiments, Dominic and Daniel, will be, well, they'll just be here, really. Then the brothers prove that we are indeed fortunate to be human. Reg brings us more fantastic fishing facts, and we investigate the latest developments in the motor industry. Now, that's what I call a convertible, and a fantastic way to beat traffic jams. Thanks, Mitch. Uh -huh. Now, scientists now know everything, and that's official. So all that's left for scientists to do now is have fun. And that's why scientists have started cloning. Cloning, the ability to isolate a group of genes from one organism and grow them into another organism. It sounds complicated, and it is complicated. So to help us understand something complicated, here's tomorrow's world boffin, Craig Doyle. <laughs> Hey, fellas. Hello there, hey, Craig. Hey. So, Craig, Hi, Craig, what's it all about? Well, basically, fellas, you're right. It is very, very complicated. It's all about genes. Mm -hmm. um, in days gone by, scientists would actually only wear these. Cords. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but uh, now, a lot more scientists are beginning to wear these. Now, genes. That's right, yeah. And, and why is that? Um, they're far easier to reproduce, basically, yeah. And how is that done? Very cheaply in sweatshops in the Far East. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks, okay. Craig. No worries, yeah, fellas. Thanks, Craig. <laughs> You see? Complicated indeed. Now here's someone who isn't. He's got the whole oh, world! Hey, 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 So, do you want to clone me then? No, but you can help us with our decloning experiment. Decloning? What's that then? Well, it's like cloning in reverse. Instead of making copies of you, we try desperately to get rid of the one of you that's in existence. <laughs> oh, so uh, how does that work then? I mean, Oh, does it have scientists involved? <laughs> well, um, sort of, yes. Uh, bring on the scientists. And Whoa. begin the experiment now. Oh, hey, 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 no. Hey. Right, well, that experiment seems to be going very well indeed. And uh, so now we're going to begin a scientific survey. As we go out and about and ask the question, what's your favourite floor covering? Well, now, my favourite type of floor covering is carpet. Have you ever heard of it? I put it on the floor and it makes it feel all furry. It's wonderful. I've put it in the driveway as well. Much better than all those stones and gravel. <laughs> floor coverings. Well, I'm biased. But then I would be, as managing director of the market leader in polyester resin reproduction Victorian lobby tiles. The floors in my house are covered with two feet of sand. Then I bury all my pots, pans, cutlery, and I have to find them with my metal detector. It's good practice, you see. No, oh, I'm sorry it wasn't featured in Hello! magazine this week! I like concrete pavements best, which, which is a good job because I'm walking on them all day. Oh, oh no, I, I've stepped on a crack. Oh, no, now the monsters are going to get me! Oh, 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 no. um, welcome back. Now, um, we're joined with beautiful neighbour star, Emma Harrison. <laughs> Hi. You, you really are beautiful. Mm. Uh, 
Thanks. <laughs> I'd like to kiss you. Well, you can't, I'm afraid. No. Well, never mind, Trevor. You may not be able to kiss Emma, but possibly you could kiss her clone. <laughs> hey, you see, I told you science was fun, folks. <laughs> OK, come on, Emma. Come with me over to the cloning booth. Come on, come on. Right. Come on, no, no, get in there. Get in there, <laughs> Honestly, talk get in there, booth. Where's the cloning booth? Inside the cloning booth, let's do a bit of fiddling around with this. Hey, oh, never mind. Uh, not, not bad. Oh, never mind. Uh, oh, oh, there. Yeah, let's pull that bit there. Pull, oh, pull that bit up there. And uh, hopefully the clone should be nearly ready now. So, Trev, get your kissing lips ready. It's kissing time. Okay, let's see how Emma's clone has come out. <laughs> <laughs> Quite there yet. Never mind. Here's Pickling Jeff. Hello, Pickling. It's Pickling Jeff here with Joby. Or should I say, Pickling Joby here with Jeff. Because Joby's asked me if he can present today's item. And I've said he can, as long as he behaves himself. So, take it away, Joby. No, 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 Joby, no, I didn't mean to take it away. I mean, do you stop? Ah, so Joby's going to pack on some monkey nuts. Sorry, Joby, sorry. Oh, 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 now he's got his pickling spoon. No, no, Joby, no, Joby, no! Stop, stop! Oh, I'm sorry, everybody. I was making a mistake. No. See you next time. Joby, stop, stop! Cousin Sam, do you like this cloning idea, or do you find it a bit scary, like? I think it's a good idea. In fact, I've cloned some of your friends. Have you? Who's that, then? Come on in, scientists. Oh! This science is supposed to be fun, then I am... Oh, then I'm the monkey's uncle. Would you mind? Oh, hello, nephew. Are you staying? Hey, you lot, watch this and be good. And you lot, be good. You will be cold if you don't wear pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Dominic Belgedis. And I'm Daniel Cakebread. And this is Art Forum. Now, today we're looking at the art of Australia. So, who better to talk to than one of the cast of Neighbours? So, please welcome Emma Harrison. Yay! Hey. Hello. Hello. Hello there, Emma. Hello. Hello. Oh, Hi. now, Emma, tell us all about the art of Australia. Okay, well, I'm no art expert. But I do know that Australia does have a rich history of Aboriginal art. Oh, yes, of course. Like this one here. What's there that? we are. Well, it's an Abba original painting. Oh, yeah. oh, tremendous. <laughs> now, now, I know a little bit about the Australian artists of the 19th century because they did a lot of paintings of the Australian bush, didn't they? Mm -hmm. that's, yeah. that's correct. Yeah, like mm -hmm. this. Yes, like this one here. <laughs> no, not Kate Bush. Oh, oh, well, is it George Bush? <laughs> No, not him either. Oh, well, well, what is it then? A mulberry bush, a gooseberry bush, shepherd's bush? You know. <laughs> it's all a bit vague, isn't it? This Australian bush lark. Oh, oh, see, over here we have lots of different kinds of bush. Oh, there do, isn't yeah. just one English bush. No, I think we need to talk to an expert, don't you, Daniel? Yes, I think so. Otherwise, we'll be here all day, Dominic. Yes, I think so. OK, please welcome international shrubbery expert, Mr. Jonathan Ross. Yes! Yeah, yeah. 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 Hello, Hello there, Mr. Ross. Ross. Hello. Hello there. Um, what can I possibly do to assist you fellas? Well, Mr. Ross, this is Emma, and she's from Australia. Now, the thing is, we seem to be having a bit of difficulty identifying what an Australian bush is. Yes, have you ever seen one before, Mr. Ross? Of course I have, mm -hmm. and I've brought one with me as it happens. Yes, oh. less of the Jimmy Savile impersonations. Yeah. Okay, can we have the bush in, please? Uh, that oh, is know. not an Australian bush. That is just a small hedge. Hmm. Well, yes, but it's but it's an Australian hedge. You can tell from the koala and from the uh, the popular Australian beverage. There, you yeah, see. Yeah. Yes. And is there anything else that proves it's an Australian hedge? Listen. Good eye. Oh yeah, <laughs> yes. yes. Good, 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 Mr. Ross. Very good indeed. Yeah, oh, yeah. oh, 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 thank you. And and what's this? Uh, that's a bush baby. <laughs> I think it's wet itself. <laughs> oh, well, tremendous. Thank you, Mr. Ross. You've been very helpful indeed. Yeah. Are you satisfied now, Emma? No, I'm sorry, I'm not. Look, I really thought this was going to be a serious discussion about Australian art. Um, I'm sorry. I'm going. 
Oh, no, 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 don't go. No, wait, 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 wait. I've got something you'll love. Yes. Look, I've got these special paintings we've had done of Sydney. I'm sure you'll love them. Look at this one. Sydney Poitier. <laughs> Sid James. Oh, with a lollipop. And, and Sid Vicious. What do you think of those? See ya. I'm out of oh. here. Oh. Oh, all right. Oh, okay, then. then. Well, that's it. I'm going too. Oh, oh yeah. Why, why, why are you doing that, then? Well, because that's how you always end these sketches. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, all right, then. Very good then. excuse. Yeah. Off you go. So we may have oh. a roll on the floor, then. Yes. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Oh, welcome, amigos, to another zesty nest full of all things zany and zoological. Oh, man, I'm hot, thirsty, and hungry. Oh, me too, man. But oh, how I wish the food cupboard and the fridge weren't way over there on the other side of the room. Oh, me and my brother, we have the courage to begin this long, hot journey across the room because we know we have a fridge full of fizzy pop and a cupboard full of snacks. Life, however, is less rewarding for the camel. Yes, amigos, the camel. These miserable humpback beasts are burdened. They live in the scalding hot desert. They cannot help themselves to a cool, thirst-quenching beverage like me and my brother. In the desert, these hairy humpers sometimes go for several days without a simple drink of water. And if they get hungry, they cannot stuff their ugly faces with snacks like us. So instead, man, get this, when they can't find any food to eat, they absorb fat from the hump on their back. Ew. Oh, imagine not having a big lump of goo on your back. Hey, we prefer to have it on our bellies. <laughs> And this lump of goo can enable them to walk a hundred miles a day on hot, scalding sand. And when they get where they're going, what treats do they eat? Thorny old scrubby bits of bush, man. Oh, think about it, amigos. It would be like you walking the streets barefoot during a heat wave with a rucksack full of lard on your back, sucking it through tubes. And when you get home, you eat your neighbor's head. Pearl, pearl, these camels ain't got nothing going for them, man. Well, no, except they do have lovely long eyelashes. But apart from that, we are fortunate to be human. Don't say anything against it. Muchas gracias, amigos. Adios. Bye. Well, now, despite my rather embarrassing earlier monkey-kissing experience, we have finally managed to successfully clone someone. Yes, please prepare yourself for our, our authentic, original human clone. Right, OK, can we have a drum roll, please? Can I have a cheese roll, please? Oh, thank you. <laughs> OK, now, send in the clones. Where are oh. No, oh, no, that's not what the best shit. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no. oh, let's forget science. That's all fine. See you later. So, Chris, do you still think science is spelled F-U-N? No, I've decided to spell it like this. Oh, interesting. Like Michelle Pfeiffer. She's not very interesting. No, no, Chris, what Trev means is Michelle Pfeiffer has a silent P. I don't think I want to know about that, thank you very much. Oh, shame on you. What? Hello, my name's Reg Gilman. Come and join me fishing for fun. I think this one's going to break a few records. <laughs> See, I told you. Bye for now. Me. Why was?